Robert F. Kennedy in Indiana. On this day in April, the Blansets have invited some neighbors over to meet the senator from New York. Like many Americans, they have questions they want answered. There has to be that understanding and explanation to those who live in cities of the importance of what you can contribute. That's what I've tried to do while I've been in the Senate. I think there's more of an understanding, but not complete understanding. Well, uh, non-farm people, or any consumer for that matter, is paying less for groceries, percentage of his take-home pay, right. than he that ever has before. in the history. That's now, how can you make them believe this? I uh, got some city cousins, and and uh, they think I'm a liar, and they don't believe that. I'm distressed at the fact that the income went down uh, and has been going down for the farmer over the period of the last uh, 18 months. And it would appear going down uh, over the period of 1968. Uh, I think that we can do more, not only with our own programs here at home, but ensuring that our farm produce is made available around the rest of the world. But even here at home, I've seen children uh, here in the United States starving. Uh, without uh, adequate or satisfactory meals, uh, whether it be in eastern Kentucky, whether it be uh, on some of our Indian reservations, or whether it be in the Delta area of Mississippi. Young children starving to death. Well, obviously, we can work out a system where you can produce these goods, and those goods be made available to our own population. That would be helpful to you, and obviously helpful to them. And secondly, with the great number of problems that are, exist around the rest of the world and what you can contribute to that, the, the Food for Peace, the expansion of Food for Peace, and other programs, I think could be terribly important. What you're thinking on foreign aid, Senator? Although I'm in favor of foreign aid, I don't think that we can do as much as we have done in the past. Secondly, I think as far as foreign aid program itself, that we have to ensure that it gets to the people and it's not just to continue in control uh, a, uh, the power structure, whether it be a military group or a financial or an economic group. And I think too frequently in the past, the money has been used for that purpose rather than for the benefit of the people. But I have traveled to Latin America and I've seen, the, for instance, the Food for Peace program. Uh, the food that you produce here in the state of Indiana has increased the number of children going to school by 35% because young children go to school just in order to get something to eat. So I think that kind of a program is well worthwhile. And it is worthwhile to have the technique and the knowledge that you have here in the state of Indiana transmitted to some of these countries that, uh, that aren't as skilled as, as you are. That would be very helpful. Uh, that should be part of the foreign aid program. impact, in other words. Yes. What's this crime in the streets saying <coughs> about this? I mean, we've got to get this stopped. It's going to get out of hand completely. I agree. I think there are things that you can do in law enforcement. Beyond that, I think that we just have to make sure that people have jobs. I think we have to move away from welfare and the dole and the handout that exists in some of these communities and substitute that meaning for that meaningful jobs and employment for people. But you see, there's a high unemployment rate in some of these areas, and uh, people uh, become hopeless, and they fill with despair, and they don't think that there's any future in their society and any future in government. And they've made all these promises year after year after year, and nothing's come through for them. The conditions are worse, not better, over the period of the last five years, and so that they uh, fill with despair, feel they have nothing to lose, and then they uh, turn to this lawlessness. It doesn't excuse it, and we can't tolerate it. I think we should bring in the private sector, too, in a more active way, and not just have the federal government in Washington running it bring in the private sector and decentralize it so that it's brought back to the people and not have just uh, programs run, run out of water. I think that's true in, in all of these efforts. People themselves know better how to do this than they do in Washington. Indiana can choose the next president of the United States.